And just like magic, I am back. And we're just trimming up the the bottom of our of our brisket. This has a pretty big fat gap back here. You just want to, and I'm getting, I think I'm getting to the bottom of it. And like I said, I'm not professional when it comes to do this. I'm not a professional butcher. But if you're going to do this, you're going to do, do want to do it right. And you're not going to want to remove the point. Although, if it will not fit in your, on your grill, you certainly can. And I'm going to kind of, I'm slowly getting getting down there and I'll be able to in a few minutes actually show you what the point how to tell where the point starts and where the flat the flat is and I'm gonna pull you guys in that's kind of where the point starts. The point's going to go this way. All of this is going to be what the flat is. Again, I'll show you. I don't know if I had you angled. The point is going to be from here this way. And all of this is going to be the flat. So again, with your good knife, you're just going to want to clear all of the silver membranes off and sometimes it can be a little bit tricky the other thing that you're going to want to do and i'm just running my knife through this to lift and i'm gonna cut some of these off the other thing that you're going to want to do before you smoke this because once it develops a really nice spark on it you're going to have a hard time showing which way that the grain is and if you take a good look, and I'm going to bring you guys up, you can see that the grain goes this way. So it goes this way, where my finger just moved. And you're going to want to make sure you cut against the grain when you, when you go to slice it. You're not going to want to cut with the grain. So when you cut it, you're going to cut it this way instead of this way so what i do rule of thumb is i will square this off so that it's nice and square and that also will give you a starting block of where you should cut it so we know now to start cutting it from here backwards Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to trim a good chunk of the side off so that you have nice the nice marble. And again, you want a really, really sharp knife when you do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut... And you can, you'll be able to see in a few m seconds the beautiful marbling of this roast. And you need to do this. You need to clean it up. You can actually see the marbling through here. It kind of looks a little bit like bacon. But trust me, this is not near bacon. So I'm just going to take my knife... I'm going to remove some of this. Now, it still has a little bit of, of tough tendons on it. And 
I'm just gonna take my, I'm having a problem getting the silver off. And I'm just gonna slowly, like I said, take my knife. And sometimes, okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with it. <coughs> And is it, in, is it the end of the world if you leave some of that on? No, it's just going to make your brisket a little bit tougher. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to flip it around. You're going to see this enormous, huge piece of fat. You're just going to want to trim that. I'm going to kind of show you what that's going to look like. And when you do when you do this, this is going to actually decrease your weight of of your brisket by quite a bit. It's gonna probably take about three pounds off of off of the weight of the brisket. And you might be going, oh my god, that's a lot of meat to waste. Well, no, it's not because you just took off a whole bunch of fat. All that's in there is this little little piece. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this over. And you're going to notice when you run your hand down the top, and I'm going to kind of let you guys see this, there's a really thick piece of fat that runs back. There's also kind of like a what they call a dirty area back here. And any hard bits of fat, like right here is really hard, you just want to trim that to about a quarter of an inch. You want about a quarter to a half an inch of fat on your brisket. Now, the dirty area, you can definitely trim some of that off. And I've got, okay, got to get some of this off. You also want to be careful with your hands that you don't cut into your thumb, which fortunately I did not do. Okay. Oh, yes, I did. Okay, I'm going to stop the video for one second. I'm going to go get cleaned up. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. I did get a little bit too close to my knife and I sliced my thumb a little bit. So we're just finishing trimming off the the um, fat. Now you want to keep, like I said, you want to get go to about a quarter of an inch of of have a, about a quarter of an inch of fat to a half an inch. And again, you're going to want to be very careful with your knife so that you don't have an accident. And if you have a little bit of me like I'm gonna turn you guys around. That's okay. Don't don't worry if you go too deep in into the meat. But you do want to leave enough fat in the meat so that it it uh, flavors this. And like I said, you you do this. Now I'm gonna score the fat so that it. 
will render and it trust me it will render during this this cook and I'm just gonna score it and that's A little bit more. Okay, a little bit stale on that. Okay, there we go. All right. And you just want to make sure the areas of fat look good. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to go over this. That's what you want the top of your brisket to look like. I'm going to flip this over. and break an ashtray in the meantime. I'm just gonna clean up the rest. Like I said, you can have a little little fat on the back. And I'm gonna actually trim this little fat cap off. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, so get out of there. I'm gonna stop the video for one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm just getting things cleaned up. I'm going to put my knife over there. I'm going to move you on top. You're going to be next to the brisket because I need the garbage can. Now, with all of the fat, if you're not feeding birds over winter time, throw all of this fat out because you won't be using it. And like I said, when you trim off the brisket, you've trimmed probably about three or four pounds off of it. Now, let me wash my hands. Now, how would you go about seasoning this? Well, you can use garlic, you can use salt and pepper, you can use the rub. I'm probably going to do a garlic. I'm going to use the Lari's garlic salt, a little bit of the Lari's um, seasoned salt on it, black pepper, and then I am going to put a nice rub on it just to flavor it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer that to the cutting to a cutting board so you guys really can't see this, and hopefully it'll stay on here. Now. I will tell you, you guys might not be able to see my microwave. I'm going to tip, tip you guys a little bit. It's 8.30 right now. I'm going to go get the grill set up. I'm going to switch cameras for a minute and see which one records better outside. It is because it is 8.30. It's already pitch black outside. About an hour hour and a half before you put the brisket on the grill, you're going to want to make sure that you fill the entire grill up with charcoal and you're going to want to make sure to give your grill enough time to stabilize. And stabilize mean, means if you're using charcoal that it holds a steady temperature, that there are no dips and, and, and up valleys with the brisket because you don't want that going on in your cook that's why um if you have a commander joe or the big red egg i use the smoke bot and the smoke bot what it basically does is i tell it online what temperature i need the meat to to be at and i tell the grill i need you to stay at this temperature for this many hours so if, if you're doing a brisket, make sure you have a regulator for your grill that will hold its temperature throughout the entire cook. Yeah. Now, you will reach a stall at some point of the cook. And usually yeah. it's right around, it can happen almost at any degree, but usually it happens between 130 degrees and 165 yeah. is when it'll hit a stall. Yeah. And you just have to let it ride through the stall. That's usually when you'll come and you'll you'll wrap it. I can tell you right now, when I put this on, it's not going to stall out during the night. It'll stall out sometime tomorrow morning. 
So, I'm going to stop the video. I'll be right back. Well, I'll be back in a bit because it's going to take me a while to set up the grill. I'm going to light it and get it going. So, I'll be right back. Okay, all I'm back. I am so sorry. I tried to film getting the, the grill started with the camcorder, and then I realized as I got six minutes in that I did not have its external microphone plugged in or even on the camera. So it recorded, but you didn't re it didn't record any sounds, so that's going to be unusable. Anyway, right now all I did is I put the smoke pot on the big green egg, and I'm going to start stabilizing its temperature once it gets to 250 degrees. Now, I haven't put any of my smoking chips in yet. I'll do that later on. What I'm going to do, and this is going to be impossible for me to film because the I really need to clean the kitchen. Let me get the camcorder off because I don't need that in my way. So, let me grab... A few things. I'm actually going to stop the, the video for a few minutes. I need to get all of this washed and put away. I'll be back in a few. Okay, and I'm back. I'm going to move you guys down here. I need to organize a few things really fast. This will take me a couple of seconds to do. And when you put this on the grill, and you guys... I'm going to try to lift you guys a little bit. I'm going to tilt you guys. I'm going to push the garbage can a little bit further. So you might not be as up close and personal, but and you're going to be at a really bad angle. Let me see if I angle that up. Okay, yeah, that's better. Okay, sorry about that. When you put this on the grill, you're going to want to keep the fat side up. So we're, what we're going to do right now is season it. We're going to start with the fat side down. Now, you can do this one of, of two ways. You can either salt, pepper, and put your seasoning on without putting olive oil on it, or you can put olive oil on it. I'm going to do olive oil and treat this like a humongous steak. And like I said, I'm going to use the garlic salt I'm going to be generous with the salt content. I'm going to use a, lot, a little bit of the Lowry seasoned salt. And I'm not going to do this for both top and bottom, but I am going to use the bullshit rub. And I apologize if you guys have kids. That's just, again, what the, what the seasoning is called. I got scared there a minute. Apparently my cuckoo clock and my the clock in the kitchen that is copyrighted are off by enough that um, I got nervous thinking that, oh my God, my clock's going to play. Now, do I need to pepper this? Actually not because this has the pepper already in it. And again, you want to do this you want to do this ahead of time. You want to do this at least an hour or longer before you put the brisket on the grill. And the brisket can stay out. Ideally, you don't want the brisket to be out for four or five hours in its uncooked stage. Or state, I should say, not stage. I'm like going, if my brisket starts playing in a show, we're in big trouble. So, I have all of my spices on. I'm just going to put a little bit. I don't know if I put a little bit, but I'm going to put a little bit more garlic on the top. <coughs> and I'm just going to set this on the back of the grill for, for a minute. I'm going to move you guys off the garbage can. I'm actually going to have ice move. Okay, and I'm going to bring you guys down. I'm just giving the grill a little bit of time to set up. And speaking of, of time, I have not had a cigarette since I had dinner 
which was two hours ago. So pardon me if I light up on while well, I'm on camera. And of course, the Band-Aid that I just put on my finger is not sticking. <coughs> All right. Mother Nature's way of telling me don't smoke right this second. So I will be right back. I'm going to stop the video for a second. I'm going to go tend to my finger. I'm going to grab my iPad and I'll be right back.